Good evening, everyone. Welcome to worship. We most certainly miss you and we wonder how you're doing. We hope that you're hanging in there in this time of wilderness. It is good to be here, to center ourselves in Christ and to lean on Christ in these challenging times. I'd like to take a moment to introduce our worship leaders this evening. Pastor Paul will assist in leading singing. Can you say hello? Hi, everyone. Have, hope you're having a wonderful evening, and we're glad to be here with you. Nicole Nordska will also assist in leading singing, and she will also present the monologue, The Professional Mourner. Say hello, Nicole. Hi, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. And then we have Ruth Ann, who will be playing piano and leading and singing. And if you could say hello as well. Hi, all. It's good to be with you. And Bethany Gola, our extraordinaire and the PowerPoint managing that. Uh, say hello, Bethany. Hi, everyone. I miss projecting with you in the office. Can't wait to get into trouble soon. And then we also have Kashir Ayers and Jody McKesson uh, will be our greeters. And they actually can say hello to us but they yeah, in, in uh, voice, but they can through the chat. And so if you guys could say hello in the chat, that would be great. I think you have been already. A few housekeeping things. If you're watching live on Zoom, you'll be able to make the smaller picture in the, the right-hand corner larger by clicking it twice. And um, if you are on a phone, you can just click uh, the image with your, your finger. If you are watching the recorded service on Facebook, you won't be able to do that. We, will, we, we are recording this service and it will be put on Facebook later if you're wanting uh, to invite friends or family to watch later. Thank you um, for taking time to send your offerings. We really appreciate that. Remember, you can send uh, any of your offerings in uh, the mail at church. We have people checking daily uh, for things that come in the mail. And you can also go to our website and there is an online donation button there uh, for you to give that way. Your offerings um, are, are helpful in supporting our ministry at Bethany, the Crystal Lake community and the world. And so please uh, perfectly consider um, sharing your offerings um, with the ministries here. This Sunday is Palm Sunday and this is an unusual time. Uh, we will be celebrating worship at 9 a.m. on Zoom, and afterward, we will post a recording on Facebook. At 10.15, we will again have uh, Miss Tammy's Sunday School time, which has been awesome. Uh, that will be posted on Facebook as well. On Friday, we um, actually have uh, our palms are coming in. So um, what we've decided is that we are going to be placing all of our palms on the perimeter of our church, um, on the grass, on our um, property next to the sidewalk. Um, we're gonna do this in a careful way. We're gonna wash our hands and um, have gloves to put them down and have them um, apart from each other. But you're welcome, if you would like, to come on Saturday to pick up a palm for yourself for Palm Sunday. Um, or you can just drive past our church and um, see the palms uh, for yourself and uh, maybe uh, just a new way of uh, getting us prepared for Palm Sunday and um, a different uh, time of our lives um, as we uh, think about and walk with Jesus at this time. Um, and we think of his story in different ways as we are walking in this wilderness and um, Jesus most certainly was walking in a wilderness as well. So with that said, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with a moment of silence. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. 
and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joy and sight of heavenly glory, coming from of God's own face. You who sing creation's glory, shine on every land and race. Who has heaped with all around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of love, of a light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. Amen. Let my fair eyes all my dreams set me for you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Oh God, I go to you, come to me now, for hear my voice and I cry to you.
prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus finally got there, he found Lazarus around four days dead. Bethany was near Jerusalem, only a couple of miles away, and many of the Jews were visiting Martha and Mary, sympathizing with them over their brother. Martha heard Jesus was coming and went out to meet him. Mary remained in the house. Martha said, Master, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask, God, God will give you. Jesus said, your brother will be raised up. And now we will hear from our professional mourner. The first thing you need to know is that I take my work very seriously. Most people think that being a professional mourner is easy, but it's not. You have to practice. That's the difference between the professionals and those wannabes. You can't just walk into a family's home and wing your grieving. That's why I've got three stages ready to go. For example, the first is a small sniffle paired with the occasional, oh no, that's so tragic. And then there's the mid-range grieving. When you sob a little louder, oh, too soon, Lord, too soon. And then there's the third wail, which is very powerful. It really brings the whole house to their knees. I like to fall to the ground, and, and sometimes I even slap the floor for effect. Oh, no! Oh, no! By the time I get to the floor, I'm wailing, and people are falling all around me. And it's a great moment. I mean, really helps people express their grief and sadness. Unless something unusual happens. You know, it's not just a way to make some shekels. We're there to help people express these things, these feelings of shame and anger, loneliness and despair, all of it. Without us there to help walk them through this, where would they be? And then again, if he's gonna be there, how much mourning is there gonna be? So I, I, I've gotta tell you about this last job. It's really, really thrown me off. You know, it started off like any other job. I got a call that a man in Bethany had died and his sister, Martha, she calls and she hires me. She hires me to come and mourn at the funeral. So I get prepared. I learn that his name is Lazarus. Martha tells me a little bit about their family. She's got a sister named Mary. And that recently they were spending some time with this rabbi who was known to heal and do all kinds of amazing things. But now he was nowhere to be seen as Lazarus had become ill. The rabbi is known in Jerusalem after doing some crazy things in the last few years, overturning tables in the temple, upsetting the council, who seemed like they were ready to kill him any chance they got. But now, strangely absent. And when word came that Lazarus had died, he was nowhere. 
so I take off to Bethany. I get to the house and Martha's there. She's preparing for guests. She's cooking. She's cleaning. She's decorating the home. And then there's Mary, the other sister. She's weeping at her brother's bed. I would say this isn't unusual. Everyone deals with grief in a different way. And you just have to be there to respond and really help them respond appropriately. I took the lead as the family prepared the body and we headed toward the tomb. That's when Martha began to crack. Tears poured down her face as the priest prayed and chanted, as neighbors and friends remembered. I noticed that Martha and Mary seemed very distracted. They kept looking up the road, like they were looking for something or someone. It was very unusual. Like they were waiting for somebody else to come. And then we just pushed the rock into place and, and we returned home. Well, as you know, that's just the beginning. And we gathered each day to mourn and grieve, occasionally heading to the tomb to put more spices on the body. Martha was in and out, weeping and checking on food. But Mary, Mary was hurting. It was more than just a death. It was like she had lost all hope. She would occasionally whisper to herself, why didn't he come? And then the lamenting would reach a fever pitch. We stood alongside her matching her mourning. And then on the fourth day, word came that the rabbi they had known was on his way. Martha sent out quickly for the edge of town. An hour or so passed and a crowd of people made their way outside. Martha came in and whispered to her sister something I couldn't make out what she was saying. And then Mary, a little begrudgingly, she stood up and began to walk. We thought she must be headed for the tomb, so we followed along. And that's when I got my first look. I got my first look at this rabbi. And I gotta be honest, I was a little surprised. With all the stories that I had heard about him, I thought he was gonna be 10 feet tall and floating above the ground. But he looked just like everybody else. Yet, there was something there. It was hard to figure out. The look on his face was torn. He seemed confident and yet also troubled, a mix of emotions that he carried. Mary fell down in front of him, her voice trying to hold back the anger and disappointment. And she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Well, that did something. The expression seemed less confident and much more mournful. His eyes welled up. He turned to us and he said, where have you laid him? As we turned to walk, he began to weep. So we get to the tomb and we take our places, ready to guide everyone through their grief again. And he turns to us and says, take away the stone. This is the first time my mouth fell open, though it would not be the last. Everyone exchanged looks, and Mary looked up in shock. Martha, looking a little bewildered, politely said, Lord, already he has been here for four days. There is a stench. The rabbi brushed the tears away from his eyes and then said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they rolled away the stone. And then he looked to the heavens and he began to pray. I was so astonished that I didn't catch half of what he was saying. But it was something like, thank you for hearing me. I know you do, but I'm saying this for the crowd. And then he yelled, startling everyone again. And he said, Lazarus, come out. And there was a pause when everyone's eyes moved to him, to the tomb. And then a faint shuffle and then an outline of a figure in all white moving toward the entrance. My mouth flew open and I fell to my knees. And there he was, Lazarus. His hand flew to his eyes when he came into the sunlight as he seemed dazed like he had just woken up. He was alive. There was this stunned silence that felt like days. 
His sisters descended on him, our wailing turned into rejoicing. There were loud shouts, tears, and looks of amazement. For days, those of us that were there would wonder, did we really see that? It didn't occur to me for days what it meant to be a professional mourner when the dead can rise again. But in all that merriment, I remember seeing his face in the crowd smiling, and yet there was this grief and maybe even fear in those eyes, as if knowing something more was coming. As if this would not be the last tomb he would find himself. We will now pause for a moment of reflection. Together we will sing when we are living. in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it
Let us pray. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever life for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. Thanks for being here. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.